How much performance do you lose in a recumbent position? How much performance do you lose in an extreme recumbent position nearly horizontal? How much is it worth to sacrifice everything in the main of aerodynamics, probably compromising the ability to express power? Is it true that the more recumbent, the less global physical performance you can reach? Anyway, is there any loss in performance or not? I think it is a very nice question. To answer, I will use all my bikes. I will make some tests in the next days. They are very different from each other. The only thing in common is that they have a very short chain. So my bikes are a Track Madonna road bike, then a classic Rev, a recumbent bike, bike made especially for climbs, better than for the flats, and the extreme Rev HTH, specifically designed for aerodynamic performance, but still drivable on climbs. And in fact, the seat position is not completely horizontal, so it is extreme, but not made only for the flats. Anyway, uh, I make it simple. I take a specific segment on Strava, 20-25 minutes long, in which I try to ride as fast as I can. That's the point. The occasion is uh, a virtual uh, competition organized by my friends Larry Oslund on the Cross Bike Forum, where everyone in the world can compete. And the aim, the aim is to, uh, to know who has the better gain in time performance. So everyone uh, has his per- per- special uh, 20, uh, 12 miles long uh, flat segment on Strava during a period of uh, 21 weeks. So very long, every, everyone, every, any competition must charge on Strava that specific segment and Larry will copy and paste it on a data table, awarding every rider with some points depending on his performance game. So a little complicated, but he knows. For this competition, of course, I have chosen my, to use my Rev HTH and to use it on the Gozano Borgamoneno segment. It is a six kilometer track to ride three times, so 12 miles long. It is a quite uh, slow track uh, because it has a, rat, a rough uh, tarmac and it has four runabouts that slow you a lot, uh, especially because it has two quite slow airplanes. So I have to regain speed every time. And it is not completely flat, but it goes 30 minutes, 30 uh, meters up and down, of course, for every lap, for three laps. It may be something like Monza for another one track, but slower. So in this period, I have more or less, more or less the same level of training with all my three bikes. Maybe just a little more with the road bike. This is very important because you can obviously gain or, or lost power or lost power with a specific training in a specific position. Uh, we all know about uh, this thing. So. so in this equal condition, the max, uh, what is the max average power of performance for all the three bikes? Can I reach the same level of athletic performance regardless of the bike or not? Is this the quality, the quality of the athletic gesture the same? The same sensation and the same ability to push? and much more important, which, is, which are the factors that condition the general performance? So the answer, my friends, is blown in the wind. So first week with my Rev HTH, I had some issues with my legs because I was a little tired because I had a ride the beef before and so what. Anyway, my average was 271 watts and their average was 44.8 km per hour. A good result, but not the best I have on that segment. So, week number two, better condition for me and for my bike. My average speed was, was 45.8, one kilometer more, and the power was 285 watts. So, that is to say 25 more. It is a 25 minutes effort, so that means that my, my FTP was at that moment 275 watts that is that sounds strange because uh, it is a little less less than my actual 295 watts so 20 watts more found found on some tests on the indoor training trainer 
I, I think everyone knows the meaning of F FTP, um, uh, functional threshold power. It is the average power you can sustain uh, for uh, one hour and you can have this data, uh, this value, it is a calculation on a 20 minute test. But I assure it was nearly my best at the time, so uh, as I try in all, in all these tests. But let's come back to the main topic. What if I make the same test with a road bike, in the same condition, the same me? So, I made the, te the same test with the road bike. What are the results? The results are 38.6 uh, average speed, even though I was constantly on the drops. So, this means that uh, actually that segment is low, it's quite slow. Because normally on, the, on, a, on a flat, perfect flat, you gain much more power. But the average speed was a monster 329 watts for nearly half an hour. Because I had to pedal, pedal more, more minutes than uh, with the, FT, the HTH. Um, was that because uh, I had some power meters not calibrated? No, it is not possible. Because we, if you confront the me measured power on some steep uh, climb, like the Monterona climbs, the values are exactly the same of the theoretically, theoretical Ambrosini formula. So, uh, this happens on all the climbs. So, the uh, power meters are okay. No, it's a matter of more sustainable power in that position. It is very bad for aero, very good for power. So, the answer to answer uh, the question before that was blowing in the wind at the moment is for me and for my body, of course, is very clear. In an extreme or very low recumber position, I can express. 10% less power than with the road bike. Of course, I can try to make something better, something more. I can try to reduce the gap and I will. But at the moment, these are the results. It is, uh, the thing is, it is the same with uh, the recumbent position with uh, the high rev. Well, for me, for me, it is very clear. It is very clear. Uh, Thing. No, talking about steep climbs on, with the, the rev, with the high rev, I always regain power. On the flat, I don't know because I have to make some tests and I will, on the Gozano Borgo Manero, maybe I will take the, the rev, the classic rev, the high rev, with a, um, a very high aero setup, so with the wheels, aero wheels, and the seat as recumbent as possible and so on. But at the moment, but at the moment, uh, it is uh, anyway. It is uh, very close to the road bike, the rev, uh, the classic rev. But only, but only if I take a completely vertical position with my back. I tried to explain these things many times in my videos. Uh, when I make some, when I, I ride on some steep climbs, I'm not resting on the seat. Uh, in that position with uh, my back uh, vertical, I breathe well, I push hard and I can sustain the effort better, just very close with the road bike. If I lie on the seat, my power is good, but it's definitely less sustainable and the overall, the overall performance is worse. So I'm taking you Two other examples. The one, the first one is the Coromonte climb with the uh, with the road bike. At the top of my performance, I rode it with 278 watts at the average speed of 11. With uh, the top effort, my top effort with the rev, let's say the high rev, the rev uh, classic rev, it was. Um, it was 262 watts, so few watts less, but the average speed was 11.3, so very close to that, even better than the road bike. That means that in this case, the aero gain of the maybe the, the rev gains just something that takes it to a better position. Another segment is the San Carlone test. For this test, it is my personal test, so you should see the comb because it is my, just mine. It's a private uh, segment. This is the road bike. 
The road bike has the best, uh, the best time, so 372 watts with an average speed of 19.2, so 4 minutes.5 uh, seconds. The iRacer is 373, so, so close but a little slow, slower than that because uh, the, the climb is quite nervous, so the road bike maybe um, is better on this climb. And the Rider HTH, it's very, it's very nice to see this thing as a time that is very close to the road bike but uh, with much less power. That means that you, uh, you have to, to put less power as an effort because you have some aero gain, so the average speed is very close to the road bike. But on the other hand, I cannot push as hard as on the road bike and this uh, underlines the things that we are saying before. So with the Rev GH it is definitely extra fast on the flat and even on some climbs, not very steep, but you can sustain uh, less power. So I think uh, it is uh, something important to, to analyze and we will analyze in the next videos. Okay, thank you very much. See you in the next video.